Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City. Yeah, it's me, Alex, and it's the Rambo. We'll be here till midnight tonight. I have been having endless, wonderful conversations with this man, Chuck Farnham. And Hello, we, sir. Yeah, we've been running him over the last couple of weeks, and the reason is that there's some great stories that we have to tell. You know. Yeah. And um, we lost track of each other for about 25 years. Let's say 20. Let's cut it. Do it an average, sure. mean average. 25 years. That's a quarter of a century. I know. You know. I know. How and, and, and it was yeah. too long is what, yeah. what it was. It was too long. Yeah. And, and the thing that got us back together again now, because it, we're old but, um, age, were questions about uh, Medicare. Right, right. We were... Well, you uh, Shecky passed away, and yeah, I w- I was running around going, okay, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm gonna call this guy, uh, wrong glasses on. Don't we all have cataract surgery? Yeah. Um, and uh, so I called, and uh, as it turns out, you and I took off right where we left off 25 years ago. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it was like we hadn't had dinner in a week, and we're like you know down at Taco Bell or something. You're kind of like cocaine. Let me explain this. You're yeah. kind of like cocaine because I often said, if you don't do cocaine for like 25 years and then you try it once, you think it's going to be really great because you haven't done it in 25 years, but it's just yeah. like picking up the last time you did it. <laughs> you know. So the same thing with you. you know, it's just yeah. it's just like the last time I, I did it. You know. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, uh, you know, you don't, you don't really change that much, and we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of entertaining history, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, and and we didn't. People are going, "Whoa, twenty five years! Why didn't you talk to each other?" You know. Oh, uh, we hate each other. That's why. We, we no, we we, <laughs> we had a falling out. We did. Yeah, that's what I would call it. We don't need to really discuss it, but we definitely, you know, uh, I, mean, I guess uh, you know, I'll, I'll confess, I made some mistakes. That's what I'll call Well, uh, you know, I confess that I made the mistake by even having anything to do with her. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, so we're both guilty. Y- you know. Um, we bo- Hey, look at it this way. We both made the look, same mistake. Look, it, it, what it was is Chuck, there was this woman I, that, I was, I, that, that, I, that I was having sex I, with occasionally. I, I don't think you want to have this conversation. But, no, you know. I don't. I, I just uh, we'll glance over it in a way. Oh, okay. glance over it now. Uh, and uh, you know, and then I stopped seeing her. I guess. Yeah. No, you did. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then you started dating her. Now, if I had known you were, I would have told you, "Don't." Yeah, that would have been a handy tip at the time. Yeah, but you might not have listened to me. You know. Maybe. Yeah. But you might have not gotten as embroiled with that woman as you did. Yeah, and, and I may have, and I may have saved you a bunch of money along the way. Save me money? Yeah. Why? On on the back end of that, if you uh, remember, what? you know, there's a, huh? <laughs> there was a, uh, you know, another person involved. Yeah, but how would and, how would you, you know a lot of legal a lot of legal fees? Let's put it that way. Yeah, but I didn't have I didn't have that same legal situation with her. No, but you could have if it would have went, you know. Well, Could have been I, your way. Oh no, Could've, I was always very careful about that. Very careful you. about it. What it was good. is he he you know, he knocked her up. Okay, <laughs> leave leave that as it may be. And so I was then kind of asked no, to take part in the in the legal action between you and her. And I yeah. was kind of siding with her uh, because you know I, yeah. I always had this softness in my heart for. Um, for um, uh, 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 unmarried, yeah, no, unmarried, no, no, no. unmarried mothers. You, you're really, you know, you're really digging here. Al. <laughs> what you're do you mean? Really digging? Is it going to be another twenty-five I, years now? 
<laughs> I don't know. No, uh, uh, let me put it this way. It was a stupid reason for you and I not to talk. Oh, very much so. Okay. But, you know, it but, is what But it, it was is. a bunch of drama. You know, it was a bunch of oh, drama. Oh, yeah, there was some drama, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but, what, what you know, we're, yeah. we're back. But yeah, what gets me is, Whatever it is, it, is the the issue of that relationship you had is how old now? Uh, a couple of decades. Wait, wait, wait a minute. It's, yeah, it's, your son. it's your son. You should know how old he is. 20, 24. Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? Good, good. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't know, believe that, though. You know, he's 24 I, years I old. Hard, I have a hard time, too. I mean, every time... I see him. He looks, uh, you know, like he's three months old. Oh, really? You look at him, and, and yeah, and he's not three months old. He is an adult. And I wonder. I you see. Know, I've never just, had. I've never had any kids, and I don't know if if you feel that way when you look at your kid. You know, do you look at your kid like he was when he was three years old? It's it's weird. Yeah, it's yeah. really weird. I see him in the hallway, or uh, we're we're out somewhere doing something, and. I see a three-year-old, and I'm, mm. you know, I'm responding to him in three-year-old fashion, and I get, you know, Dad, I'm not three. Well, it's because no, no, he takes after his father and is wearing a diaper still. And, and well, yeah, did, didn't you wear a diaper he, on one of our shows? As I remember, uh, many. I had a case of diapers. You, when the, I would do a New Year's show, weren't you Baby New Year? I, I was Baby New Year, <laughs> and then I, and and then we were Baby New Year up in. San Ramon or something, or San yeah. Rafael, and we got a phone call from the mayor's office, and they said uh, no nudity. They have a no nudity clause in San Ramon or San Rafael or one of those places. And I get pulled into an office, and they want to, you can't get naked. I go, what do you mean? That's the whole bit. Fat guy knew. And they're like, you can't get naked. They have a law, Santa Rosa. You can't get naked in Santa Rosa. You can't get naked in Santa Rosa? What? Not in public. They got a law. Oh, not in public. Oh, okay. You're right. And we were in public. We were in that, you know, even though people paid to get you in know, there. That's something that maybe you couldn't do then, but we could probably do now. Because there are probably laws that have been challenged about being able to go naked in public. You know? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Gee, you know, I think what you did was valuable because what you did was you managed to set up situations to prove that some people have no sense of humor. Oh, yeah. They really have no sense of humor. I mean, your stuff was so outlandish that you, you know, what? You know? Yeah, they, uh, well, uh, I don't know. You remember the time... I decided that um, the meter mates were chalking my tires without my permission, so they were, uh, um, you know, um, defacing your car. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I said to their the meter mate, I said, "How would you feel if I did that to your little cart?" She goes, "I wouldn't care." So the next morning, we jumped the fence over at the meter maid place <laughs> and tagged all the tires on all the cars. <laughs> <laughs> they, which, they have this old chalk which, thing, which was hysterically funny, until you get a call from the city saying that they lost out on six thousand dollars worth of tickets while having to wash off their meter maid cars, and they wanted to send me to you know jail. So we cut a deal with them, uh, Harry uh, Harry O and the, and the Green Hour. That I would come on and talk about how meter maid people were some of the nicest, kindest, helpful people in the city. Yeah. So I didn't go to jail. Wow. But yeah, yeah. I uh, that, that's a, that's a, uh, I seem to remember. Did you go to Did you go to traffic school with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gay traffic school. Yeah. Well, no. What happened was I had to go to traffic school, and in the San Francisco, you could go to comedy traffic school which i didn't want to do because right. i didn't want to see like a you know uh, an opening act uh teaching me right. about traffic <laughs> okay and then you could go to like cooking the traffic school traffic you go to school. all these and they and finally i looked there and I said oh gay traffic school let's go to that one yeah and that was fun we had a great time we, yeah uh, it was so much fun 
Because everybody was saying, I didn't know you were gay, Alex. I said, I'm not. I'm just here because it looked like the most fun I could have doing a traffic school. Exactly. They were all worried in, up front that we were going to make fun of gay traffic No, school. as a matter of and fact, it was, I, we I, wanted, it was exactly the opposite. I felt the people there, the teacher there, uh, they were all terrific, you know, and yeah. very entertaining. And I had a good time and you had a good time. Uh, I had a great time. You know. And Lori, Lori brought donuts. It was good. It was Lori wasn't going to traffic school at that. No, point. no, she brought us donuts in the morning. Can I you remember. bring donuts to traffic school? I didn't remember you, that. You, you can. Really? Maybe gay traffic school. I would go to gay traffic school again if I, you know, needed to go to traffic school. I would go to gay. Traffic yeah, school. I mean, if I did, they didn't have gay traffic school. I probably just would have paid the fine. You know? Yeah, I couldn't do that. I was not going to pay the fine. I was angry about what happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, but so, I also felt that by going to gay traffic school, I would have something to talk about on the air because right. it, my thinking, well, this is my little mind here, okay, crazy little nutcase mind, is that how can I translate this into something for the show? You right. know, and if I'm if I go to comedy traffic school, that won't be. But if I go to gay traffic school, I've got four hours worth of material on that. Exactly. You know? So it was a matter of. I, how how could I, I got get buzzed. material? But the reason I was there, because mm -hmm. you and I were at um, Bimbo's 365, where we got to be the mermaids, and I was dressed. They had a girl in the fish, but they had it at Bimbo's. This went on for years. There was this uh, fishbowl on the bar, okay, and if Still you there. and if you looked in it, there was a mermaid. And it, so it was known as the home of the girl in the fishbowl, okay. And what it was, it was a whole series of mirrors that went down to the basement where somebody... Way down. Way down. Way, way but, down. It, but it was set up by mirrors. You know, this wasn't, there wasn't technology back then. Today, we just do a video and play it in the fishbowl. But back then, there was a woman in the basement lying on a bed. And uh, uh, she, she then was, her visage was sent up to the fishbowl. And you were in the fishbowl once, right? Yeah. You were there, too. We were both down in the basement, yeah. and we were on that turntable thing. Yeah. And everything was fine, and the show went great. And then I was a Christmas tree at the show because it was a holiday thing. And I got out to my car. I know all this window. sounds ridiculous. Let me just get people yeah. up to date who haven't listened to the other two interviews I did with you. Chuck was my... One one of the cast on the morning show, and he was our uh, uh, stunt guy. Moron he went out and did things, right? And in this case, we were at the. Uh, I did things. I definitely did things. So what'd you do? Did you lie there? Uh, no. So I go out to get get to the car, mm -hmm. and my window's been broke, and my clothes were in the car, and they stole this Abercrombie and Fitch bag with my clothes in. Mm -hmm. So now I have to drive home wearing the Christmas tree outfit. It was pouring down rain. I'm driving down by the Transamerica Pyramid, and it's pouring down, and I can't see the intersection. Mm -hmm. So I stopped out in the intersection a ways. Yeah. Cop shows up and says, "You know, uh, you know, you're part, you're illegally in the street." I go, "I can't see the street. It's pouring down rain, and the window in my car is broken out, as you can see." And there's rain coming in the car. Mm -hmm. And I go, and I'm dressed as a Christmas tree. You know, that ratty old Christmas tree costume. Yeah. She goes, she just looks at me and goes, I don't care. And gives me the ticket. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I, your city has robbed me of my clothing, broke my window, and I'm now I have to drive 50 miles home because I lived in San Jose. I drive 50 miles home dressed like a Christmas tree. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I know all this sounds and, very weird, folks. But if you were there and you were yeah. you were part of our our crew Nightmare. at the time, none of this is weird. What we're talking no, about? No, no. And I'm like, okay. So I come in the next morning. Boy, do I have a story about how you know I was out working for the show, and uh, you know I got a ticket. So we're not going to pay the ticket. And you go, I've got my ticket problem too. And so we decided. Gay traffic school was the solution. Yes. Gay traffic and it school. Was. If they still have it, go to gay traffic school. I'm telling you. Go to you. gay traffic school. It's just more fun. Than... 
Yeah. Yeah. And if they great. if they have like a trans traffic school now, go to that one. Yeah. That would have oh been even God. more fun. Most fun I ever had uh, when I first moved to San Francisco, mm-hmm. Pinocchio's. Pinocchio's, you have to explain Pinocchio's, though, because most people don't know what we're talking about. Pinocchio's right. was a nightclub in San Francisco that featured cross-dressing performers. Right. They, they weren't called trans in those days. No. You know. And they would do four shows a day. And literally, I mean, I came out from Wyoming. I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Never laughed so hard. I stayed through all four shows. Yeah. Um, great. Could I say safely that you're one of the weirdest people I've ever known? Thank you. And what you did, <laughs> you know, I, there's a certain part. I mean, I'd like to, uh, you know, on a daily basis, I'll let you ask what I was doing later. On a daily basis, I'd like not to be me, too. But I don't know how. You'd like not uh, to be you? Yeah, it's, you know, the things that float around in my head, they're not okay. You know, and then I'm, I started writing them down. Yeah. And now I've got these books and books and books of really bad ideas. And <laughs> I feel like I feel like the need to implement some of them. I should just I should just start co- every time I have one, I'll just start texting you see, it to you, you go, is this gonna be okay? Yeah. You see what I've been missing for the last twenty five years? See? Yeah, me and me too. Yeah. And now we now, now we can do it in a way like we never could do it. We never could do this right. back then. This is how we really wanted to do I mean, what he, we were He's the guy who got me into what the World Wide Web was. You were into it way before anybody. You, yeah. You knew what it was. You knew what its potential was. You just didn't know. It. I I couldn't get you to f- tell me exactly where it was. You know. Right. How do well, I, after, I? We don't know yet. You know, and I and slowly I got to know what the World Wide Web was when we did a website. And, right. and so Chuck was very influential in my learning about technology, you know? It was, well, the weirdest moment I think I had with you was I walked in one day wearing, um, uh, what was that um, tea, that public access show you had in New York? Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue, yeah. I woke in, I walked in one day not knowing anything about this. And I, I was a big fan of watching um, Midnight Blue. Mm-hmm. And I had a Midnight Blue t-shirt. And I walked in and you turned around and you went, where did you get that? And I go, oh, I love that show. And you go, that was my show. What were you doing? I'm like, I'm like, I had no idea. So we were, you know, we were bonded without knowing it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a lot of what we talk about, folks, is stuff you just couldn't do today. No. Nope. You just Not couldn't do it today. I mean, and that's kind of sad. I mean, we you talk about my radio show in San Francisco. We we had a studio audience every morning. People would just come right. and sit there and watch the show. Sometimes we'd have donuts and coffee if there was some available. But people would just come there and sit in the audience. I had people writing me all the time saying, oh, I was in your audience all the time. And blah, I, blah, I get blah. those too. And hey, where's Larry Sandwich today? Let's find that guy. Larry Sandwich. This was a guy who would go out and buy us <laughs> sandwiches. Every morning, yeah, I felt I'm like guilty. I come in and go, "What's the deal?" He goes, "What do you want?" And he's taking notes, and I'm like, "Who does this guy work here?" Larry Sanders. Larry, yeah. he didn't work there. He just got people sandwiches. But anyway, so uh, I mean, it, it was you know it, we had a studio audience, and uh, uh, sometimes we have a you know we had them waiting out the door and around the co- street around because the like the day we had Tori Amos and Jackie Chan on the same show, you could. Yeah. You, had, you know, it was, the line went all the way down the block. And we that could was a only, massive double we, bill. We could only fit about 50 people in there. So, uh, yeah. but, but think about it. We couldn't do that today because no radio station would want no. people coming into their offices at 6 o'clock in the morning and sitting there. You know? Yeah, and the, they, they really talk about the wrong things. You and I could sit here and talk about the news in a way that would be funny. Yeah. And not politically motivated at all, where now you talk and it's either one side or the other. Yeah. You're not, you know, you're not in the middle. I don't think I was ever assailed for my political opinions, ever, in yeah. those days, you know. And I was against the death penalty, and I, I was for all, I was, I was for all what I considered the righteous stuff, you know, right. the decent stuff. And today, 
you bring up politics, you've got an argument. People want to fight. They really get angry and they get mean. And it's like, come on. You, we're the same people that we, I, you know, I get in these fights with people I went to high school with and stuff. And it's like, dude, remember when we used to sit and drink on the railroad tracks? Right. Nobody was talking about this now. Why are you, why is this a problem today? You know, we're both old. You know, yeah. now you look at this thing and go, well, you're in your 80s. I'm 65. Yeah. We, we never thought we'd get this far, but here we are. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, and, and, you know, but we couldn't do so. But even the discussions I had on the air, you know, I was yeah. I talked to my friend, still friend, Bobby Slayton, a couple of months ago. He's quit the business. He just quit the business. Yeah. He said, I just can't do my act anymore. You know, number one, because I'm older, Still and, the need a and the clubs like to hire younger comics because they're so goddamn right. funny, right? And he said, and and I can't do my, my act anywhere without somebody complaining about it. Or, or could you imagine, uh, I was talking about this the other day, Tree trying to do his act today. How about how about I, I talk to Bubbles once every two weeks for this show, just like you and right. I are doing, except he still doesn't have a decent phone, so I can't do a Zoom call with him, you know. Of course not. Uh, but, Flip phone bo but, Bubbles. But planning about Bubbles, it. we were talking about stuff well, he could you do imagine, today. Uh, I mean, I was talking about for this instance, the other day. Tree his, trying uh, to you know, uh, his main, biggest phrase when he was doing traffic for me, he, he was part of the cast, too. Was park it, whore. Right. Do you think he could do that today? You know? No. So. no. It would be a huge problem. You know? Most I, of the things he thinks about are probably a huge problem today. Yeah. I mean, he had catchphrases like, hooker. You know, I mean. Hooker. Yeah. No. But, yeah. Or it's uh, my favorite Bubbles joke. Is, uh, and I have lost my mind. I, I cannot hear it without laughing, but it goes... Uh, my favorite part of the date is when I uh, close the trunk and push the car into the lake. Yeah, or, or, uh, or I I lose I lose my mind when he says that. I like that is the funniest. Uh, he said he said I he said that's one joke he can't do today. You know? I know. He said my my he said not. he said my best part of my of an evening is is le leaving without paying, <laughs> you know, leaving a woman without yeah. paying. Yeah. Her. You know things like that. Yeah, his his opening line though sets it all up, uh, and he still uses this because he can. He said, uh, "Somebody stole my identity, but now they have no life." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. Great. He, no, and Larry is a he's a great guy, and he's hysterical. We both, you know. Yeah. No, he's he's we both he's very good, very good. He's Slayton, very very, he's very good, but he's where he is, and you know. Yeah. We go. I, I would. I would have never. Matter of fact, I was at the recording of that album he did a couple of years ago. I would never not, you know, go see Larry if he was in town. Uh, Larry's Larry's a wonderfully funny comic, and a lot of comics like to use him as an opening act because he's the best of all opening acts. He doesn't spoil the room, you know. If a guy no. gets up and screams for five minutes and whatever, that spoils the room. If he plays a guitar and does musical parodies, that spoils the room. If he does magic, right. that spoils the room. But he doesn't spoil the room. So he's the perfect middle act. He's the per perfect opening act. He's the opening act for Dana right. Carvey. He's an opening act for David Tell. David Tell. You know, quite a yeah. few people who, whenever he, they're in San Francisco, get me bubbles. You know, yeah. So. Because it's just, it, it, he's so good at what he does and knowing him makes it even funnier so we did a morning I mean, show he's even yeah we did a morning show with this guy we did a morning show with Lori thompson we did a morning show with L larry bubbles brown and between all of them there wasn't a sane person in the group no yeah. not even close. we're all insane on a certain level i was probably the most grounded one of the rest of you yeah yeah you were you, you, you were the straight shooter of a bunch of uh, well, guys who wanted to be criminals. I right? was in charge of making sure you had a job the next day. Yeah, you know, yeah. If I had given in to everything you wanted to do, that show would have been off a lot sooner.
<laughs> you know? Yeah. It was, you know, I, yeah. you know, you just write it down and you go, this might be a good idea. Let's try this. And I, I can remember going out, um, you, you drug Mel Sharp into it one time, the guy who basically created man on the street stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sharp and coil. And I went out with him for a whole morning yeah. and then we had lunch afterwards and, I, I, it was like you were with God. Yeah, Everything yeah. the guy, they came out of the guy's mouth was like, you're doing the right thing. This is what you need to do. Hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time. I want to do this again. Okay. All right. Not today, sure. but again. Some uh, other day. Soon. I'll call you, you know, get a hold of you because, you, I'm not hard because to get we have something very much in common now. You have nothing to do and I have nothing to do. Nothing to do. Exactly. Okay. Welcome to retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Farnham. Thanks, Chuck. Hey, man. Okay. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, that's uh, Chuck Farnham, and we'll bring him back in uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, I, n tomorrow I'm interviewing, a lot of people will be interested in this, I'm interviewing... <clears throat> uh, my old, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, newswoman. <laughs> my old newswoman. She's not old, but my newswoman, uh, Lori Thompson. Uh, I'm supposed to interview her tomorrow. We'll see what happens, okay? And um, listen, uh, tomorrow uh, I am going to be, somebody called me up today and just said, could you be a guest host on our show tomorrow? radio show here in New York and it's kind of unusual and I got us <laughs> this is strange okay real strange all right uh, I'm gonna be on the answer it's the name of the station is the answer uh, here in New York I don't even know if you if you go online you'll probably find it and they'll probably have a link and you can listen to me live at six o'clock tomorrow night six to seven okay now what's unusual about this and I said, I don't know if you really want me to do a show on your station because I know that, uh, well, you're, you're not exactly my side of the, of the street. And the woman said, yeah, we are a Christian, right, get this, Christian right-wing radio station. And I said, so why do you want to have a left-wing Jew <laughs> on your station? And she said, we just heard you're really good. So how could I trim that down, okay? I, I, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. If I'm too exhausted, I won't do a show here tomorrow night, but that doesn't matter, because on Thursdays, does anybody even call at all, you know? Hey, guy, I got this dark thing here, and that isn't a, that isn't a uh, believe it or not, if I shine a light on it, see that? If I, if I shine a light on that, it's not dark. It's just that there's a tooth over another tooth, and it's uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's not a there's not a cavity in there. It's not a cavity at all. It's been like that for quite a while. And I I asked my dentist about it, and she said, oh well, you know, it's just uh, a lot of tartar in there and stuff that we can't get out. And I went, oh okay, all right, fine, I'll live with it. Okay. Anyway, so. But I just noticed that it was showing up more tonight than on other nights. So I'll just do this, talk like this, not uh, not show it up. Okay. But anyway, if I if I decide not to do a show tomorrow night, I'll I'll post it on the uh, on the um, uh, Facebook page. Okay. But I probably I probably will do one tomorrow night. But I just in case I don't, you know, it's just because I'm too exhausted. Because I'm going to have to do an hour talking tomorrow and I have no guests or anything and I'm not taking phone calls particularly although I might give out a phone number if you want to listen you know and try and call me that'd be nice too but I I don't know really if if that's even gonna gonna happen they they said well you could ask for calls but we don't get any calls really when we do that and I went well and I guess I'm going to be speaking to dead air is what I'm going to be speaking to but they asked me to do it, and I just said, okay, I'll, you know. 
I'll be a good I'll be a good sport and say yes. Why I have no idea, but uh, that's tomorrow night. It's called the answer. Where is it? Wait a minute. Let me look it up here. Let me see if I can find out where it is. The answer. Uh, the answer. Okay. Uh, well, the answer. Um. Well, no. Wait a minute. Is that a radio? Where do we have the radio station? The answer. Right, let me see. Uh, radio. Let me just put in radio here and see if it comes up. Oh, there it is. 970 AM. And if you go there, you can just click on, you just go to uh, am970theanswer.com. Yeah. am970theanswer.com. And then up in the corner it says listen live. So you can then listen to the show live. Um, this I'm thinking of for a guy named Arthur Adala, who is a uh, lawyer, and um, uh, and uh, other people on the station. Joe Piscopo has a talk show on the station. Oh my God, I've hit bottom, haven't I? Uh, anyway, that'll be tomorrow night. I'll, I'm I'm just doing it because I'm being a good guy about it. I don't know what I'm going to do for an hour. In fact, I'm worried I'm going to sit there and say I've got nothing to talk about. So, you know. But we'll see what happens, okay? Anyway, we got some people waiting to come on here, just three of them, actually. Um, and and they're, they're two of our usual three. Of course, there's Charlie Wallace, who we really love and adore, and Jeff, who we love and adore, and Alan. Hi, Alan. How are you? We don't love and adore. Okay, I get it. Well, I mean, is there anything adorable about you? No. See? <laughs> Okay, here's the t-shirt of the night. English is important, but math is importanter. Okay. That goes along with my t-shirt, Sarcasm, another service I offer. Uh, that's very good. That's very good. It's a good t-shirt. Which one of us? Yours. And oh, his. Good. His are always good. Yeah. And, yeah. But his are usually scientific, and he has to explain them to us. Jeff, right. let's see your whole face, Jeff. Get yourself in the center of the screen. There we go. Okay, good, good. That's terrific. Thank you. Well, it's just us guys here. Oh, you know? yeah. There will be more. No, there won't. No. <laughs> no. It's all <clears throat> it's all over. You know, I'm not I'm thinking of not posting this on my Facebook page anymore. And the hmm. reason I'm thinking of not posting it on my Facebook page is because I don't get that many people going to my Facebook page to see it. So why should I? Why should I go to that trouble? Yeah. And, uh, you know. There's Kevin. Wait, where, Time for where? a little vacation. What? Time for a little vacation. Well, I, I'm going to be taking a vacation probably later on in the year um, because I'm going to have some money coming in and... Uh, I, I, we're going to take a really nice vacation. You said you'd be gone for about a month, huh? Maybe it might take a month. Yeah, we uh, we don't know yet. You know, Marjorie says, well, maybe we should take two weeks somewhere, come back for a week or two, and then go out for another two weeks, you know. And when are you I, thinking of going? I have no idea. Probably, wow. probably not until fall, because I don't want to do a lot of that summer traveling, because all the other people are on are there. You know, uh, but well, we'll see. We'll see. And maybe we'll just never come back. You know, maybe we'll just <laughs> go away and never come back. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have Jack do his show here probably while I'm gone. But I don't know who's going to maintain the. I, well, I can probably maintain the site, you know, from a distance. But uh, if something goes wrong, um, which it could, you know. Uh, without me being here, uh, somebody could just push the wrong button. I'm not saying who. Yeah. And and screw up everything for like you know the month that I'm away. So I don't know if we don't just turn off the station for like a month and then come back, you know. And I you know and I come back. Hit your, uh, what? Hit your YouTube button. Oh oh that hit my YouTube button. 
Yeah, it's just you on YouTube. Oh, I'm saying, uh, yeah, I forgot that. I, I forget to do this sometimes. I get so wrapped up in talking to you guys. There they are, folks. See? But they, I'm, I'm such a handsome visage that there's no reason why I shouldn't be the only one here, right? Yeah, <clears throat> you can put it back. That's fine. Yeah, I can put it back. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway, so thank you for telling me that, by the way, because nobody else would tell me. Let me see. Anybody write that down? Could anyone imagine? You no, know, something, some kind of thing about red fox. Um, I said the, no way he could get away with his act nowadays. Oh, he, no way he could get away with his act. Yeah, he didn't get away with his act when he was around. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was always considered a, a dirty act. It was amazing that broadcast television found a place for him. You know, because, I mean, he was known as a dirty comic. Oh, yeah. So my dad had some records from him that would boil the paint off your car. Well, they were called party records. Yeah. Remember? And Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was he was filthy. He was just filthy. Uh, and uh, then uh, he got, uh, he, he, he did... Uh, Sanford, Sanford and Son. And, yeah. and so he would then play Vegas, and all these people who loved him on Sanford and Son would go to see him in Vegas thinking they were going to get Fred Stanford, but what they got was Red Fox. Wow. There's a, there's a great story about Red Fox that I love in which he was, uh, uh, he was there uh, in Vegas, and the announcer announces, ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. And then they play that Sanford and Son music, da 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 and he waddles on stage, looks out at the audience, and realizes there are only three people in the audience. He goes, fuck that. And he turns around and walks off stage with the band going, da 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 But supposedly, it, that's, that's a true story. So, I so was a Red a Fox... Huh? In the village of New York, and he was great. Was he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> dirty, right? Work blue. Yeah. 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 Why is blue considered a dirty color? It seems to be a lack of oxygen color, but it doesn't seem like a you know a dirty color. So how are you people doing? Anything? Yeah. Anything you want to report? Talk about? We have, we have um, I think, the worst idea for a candidate for the Democratic Party uh, in Joe Biden. He has announced that he's going to run again. Yep. And I consider him a little selfish in doing that. I yeah. think that he's got to know that if he's going to be 86 when his second term is over, that people are not going to like that idea. They're not going to feel comfortable with it. And you think another Republican, I mean, another Democrat will run? I don't think, no, nobody's going to go up against him. No, no. no. And, and that's sad because, I mean, mm -hmm. he should have to fight for it this time. I mean, he's, he, he's, he's too old to run, I think. You know, and, I'm, and, and look, you know, I'm 83, and I know that I'm tired all the time. <clears throat> okay, I'm exhausted. I mean, I have to do one radio show tomorrow, and I don't know if I'm able to do this thing tomorrow night. You know, I probably will be able to, but I, I you know, I sit here and go, I don't know if I can do that. And it, it's just, uh, I just know what it's like to be 83, and he's going to be 82 if he wins. Yep. Okay. You know, even Bernie's bowed out. Even Bernie's bowed out. Exactly. Uh, and I think that he, he's being a little egotistical. To say I'm going to run again, rather than just say, you know, time for me to retire. I've enjoyed being president. I think I've done a good job. Let's pass the baton on to the next generation. But he couldn't do that. He's like running out of spite. You yeah, know? MB, NBC had a their their own little uh, well, thing they, that it, said that yeah, sixty four percent of the Democrats don't want him to run. And equally, seventy-two percent don't want 
uh, Trump to run. No, they, they were, of, of the Republicans. They said total 75% of the people questioned didn't want either person to run. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, what is the American public being handed? I mean, the Democrats are not going to fight Biden on this one. You know, they're going to try and be happy campers. But I, I can't believe that anybody in the Democratic Party sees this as a good idea. You know? I don't. You know? Um, but if he runs, if he wins the nomination, I will vote for him again. Oh, yeah. Well, well I, you know, I'm going to vote for some asshole Republican? Exactly, yeah. Now, no there, there's no... There is some, some people who are not asshole Republicans, but they're not going to run, obviously, no, you know. Uh, but uh, you give me a good Republican, I would vote for him, you know. Not me. A good Republican, you know, it's one that's kind of in the middle and it, it doesn't try to play the whole MAGA thing and all of that, you know. But there are They still would put more assholes on the Supreme Court to take more rights away from people. I imagine... You know, um, although there was a time, you know, where you could trust a Republican to do the right thing. I mean, you got to remember a lot of the most liberal Supreme Court members were people that were put up on there by by Reagan. But at the time, he yeah, thought that Thomas he, was put on there by Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and was helped along by Biden, believe it or not. You know. I mean, he he he, he kind of made it rough for Clarence Thomas during the hearings, but he didn't say, "I'm not giving you my vote." That he voted with everybody else to give him the nomination, you know. So anyway, you know, I mean, I just think that. I just don't think that that that, that he's the. Uh, he, he that I that I think he's a good idea, and I think it's a bad idea that he said he's running. You know, he should have said, hey, you know, I've done four years. I've tried to do my best. I think I've done my best. It's time to pass this baton off to a younger person. And then the Democrats should find a younger person to run for, for, for office because Trump's an old fuck anyway, you know? Gavin Newsom, maybe? Well, Newsom, well, I imagine if Biden got out of the way, Newsom might give it a shot. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, barring that, he's not going to go up against Biden. No. You know, and he's basically said, I'm, I'm not running this go round. Maybe next one. You know, in uh, what, what would it be, 2028? Yep. I guess if any of us are still alive. Yeah, if I'm still alive. God, 2028. If I'm tired now, I wonder how tired I'm going to be then, you know. Six more years. Yeah, six more years. Five. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I would be, how much, how old would I be? I'd be 88. He'd be, he'd be 70, he'd be, he'd be 86. Yeah. Why don't you run as an independent? <laughs> you know, if you want somebody who's old, hey, here I am, you know. I'd vote for you. Yeah, but I mean, if I were him, and I looked at the polls, and I looked at what the polls said about my age, I think I'd probably say, I think I'll pack it in, because I don't think this is good for America, for me to do another term. I don't think it was good for him to run in the first place. Right. You know, I thought he was getting too old to run the last time. But again, who was I going to vote for? Yeah. You know. And now... Um, it, it, life is uh, strange in the kind of trip, uh, turns and takes and uh, so on. And the latest one is Ron is DeSantis down in Florida. Ron DeSantis. Like he's going to run. It, what? Oh, yeah. He looks like he's going to run. I don't, I don't. Oh, no. He's self-destructing. No, here. I don't think he's going to run at all. No. I think, I think everything's going bad for him. Mm-hmm. The latest thing is that Disney finally said, we've had it with you, <laughs> okay? And they've decided to file suit against him mm -hmm. for, for using, his, uh, using politics 
to try and hurt their business, Disney's business. And he's, and he's got a good case for it. Um, uh, because he's even made statements like, I'm going to put Disney out of business or whatever, you know? And I think if he, if he sue, if they sue, they're really, and Disney's got, you know, got a lot of fuck you money. Okay. DeSantis yep. and the state of Florida don't. I mean, I often said that what I thought Disney should have done was say to DeSantis, either you turn this whole thing, this whole attitude you've got around, or we're just going to close down Disney World, but -hmm. we're not going to sell the property. Okay? That would be a big expense hit in tax-wise. Well, well, it would be a huge economic disaster. Absolutely. Quite a few states in the South have yeah. asked Disney to come to their to their mm-hmm. state, um, and um, I think that that uh, that's always a possibility, you know. Uh, but the point is, they have the largest employers in the state of of, of uh, Florida, yep. other than the state of Florida. No, including oh, the state really of Florida, bigger than the, the state biggest of Florida. the biggest employers in the state of Florida. Wow. And uh, they are responsible for about 50 million people coming to your that state every yeah. year. You know? And a lot of money when they come to. If tomorrow Disney decided to leave, mm. that state that state's going to be in big trouble. Going to be in big trouble. So, I mean, friend of mine's daughter works there. What? A friend of mine's daughter works there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people unemployed, too, unfortunately. Well, you know, I mean, they can blame it on DeSantis. Yeah, they can blame yeah. him. Yeah. He, there yeah, was such a mess. Well, thing. the latest thing that DeSantis said that they said may nail, the, put the nail in his coffin where the suit is concerned is when he said, well, you know, we're considering maybe if uh, right next to Disney World, Disney World of putting a prison. Yeah. What? He said that. He said yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, he did. He's out of his mind. No, but... It, he said it, and that's enough yeah. to win a suit on. Yeah, I mean, come on, yeah. right? Children, we're going to put us to jail. You're, you're showing a certain viciousness. Exactly. Yeah. He's going the route of pillow boy. Maybe, maybe he's building a special jail for Trump. Oh um, yeah, you're Trumping. <laughs> I knew he's. Gonna... Well, he said if uh, if uh, uh, they wanted to extradite Trump, he would stand in their yeah. way. Yeah. So he's being uh, the Trump, good guy. Trump's not. Trump's not that stupid. He's gonna. He's he went to New York already. Hmm? He he Trump's been business. vicious to him. Yeah. yeah he's been really well, nice. you know, he's on trial again here in New York. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah, for rape. For rape. Yep. Yeah. But it's a civil suit. It's not a, a criminal suit. That's yeah. Statue of limitations war. Out. Well, yeah, but it's a civil suit because he called her a liar. Yep. And now she's, you know. <laughs> yep. So, uh, uh, you know, he's, this is the second trial that's involved him in, is in just a few months. And now it looks like Georgia in, uh, they said August, I think, latest September, uh, is going to come out with indictments in the Florida, in the uh, Georgia situation. And I would imagine that indictment would include uh, Trump. So he's got trouble there. Then he's got the federal thing with the with the with the uh, with the stolen documents. That's another case. And there's yeah. one other case that I'm not even thinking. Oh yeah, of course, it's January sixth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Proud Boys came out against them too. Did you see that out? No. What did they say? One of the leaders of the Proud Boys. I don't have the article in front of me, but he said he was saying, insinuating that he instigated the tweet on their page, like linking it, saying, "Come down, it's going to be wild." This and that. He was insinuating that. He stroked, he stroked that whole thing to bring it, bring us down there. So, th- and they got to have this guy. I think they got to have him under oath, or he's. So he, he's pretty much saying he was the ringleader. Of course, they might be trying to cop a plea. Well, I no, think what, they they, what they're mm-hmm. trying to say is that the the Proud Boys uh, were the instigators, mm-hmm. and so what they're saying in court is no, we're not. Trump was the instigator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, I mean, Trump's got. I, I wish everybody would like hit them all at once. Yeah, it's coming like a little. Actually, maybe a little bit out of time is good because every time he turns, there's something else to come. Then. Yeah, yeah, could be. 
you know but i mean i just uh, i just think that we this man should not be allowed to run for president because he outright is a criminal you know he's a criminal absolutely and i just don't know you know now here is the fun story of the day when guess who was offered um, um uh, tucker carlson oh. a job let me guess oh no i was talking to phil about this i didn't read it i just saw the comment is it a woman, Alex? No. Oh, I, t I told my sister they could replace him with a woman. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I didn't say who replaced him. Oh, uh, who was offered? Who offered him a job? Oh, let me see. Oh, oh who offered, offered him a job? Him oh, a my job. God. Don't okay, call me MSNBC. Yeah. No. We yeah, saw that. What? The, it, Russia. Yep. Russia? Russia yep. has offered him a job. Gonna... <laughs> he's he's Un mouthing off all these Russian points anyway. Yeah. They they want to hire him. <laughs> That's funny because Jimmy Kimmel made a joke about it the other night. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I, there's a funny thing is this woman taking over. Her name is Desi something or another. Is taking over the the um, uh, uh, wow. Daily Show this week. Uh, and she, Desi, yeah, yeah, and she's very funny by the way. Mm -hmm. And she she said that the reason why we haven't heard from Tucker Carlson yet is it turns out Fox has some very incriminating tapes about him uh, and things that he has said that if released could be very intimidating. She said, well, what it was, they taped his shows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. He made the, you ever see the face he used to make in the cameras, like, like he was oh. always confused. Like, the, is that an act, Alex? Is that done on purpose? I, I have wonder. no idea. I have no idea. He makes that bizarre look I, like I, I've been. I've been saying over and over again that I used to be on Tucker Carlson. I watched show. that when you want to eat my lunch. And I'm starting to think that maybe I shouldn't say I was on Tucker Carlson's <laughs> show. Well, I mean, should, I, should, I, should I should I put this on my resume? No, I'd be sitting and working an A and P. <laughs> look, I enjoyed when you were on. I used to eat my lunch and watch. I thought you were in the same. I never knew you were not in the same place as him. Oh no, we. I never knew that. Well, I those like, days, in those today, MSNBC works out of Thirty Rock, but in those days, all the live shows worked out of out of um, uh, the um, studios in uh, in New Jersey. I'm trying to remember what town in New Jersey. I think that's near Cresco because when I went to my aunt's house and I turned, I thought I saw the one of the TV stations. Well, like what it's happened only was months. what happened was how those studios came to be, is that years ago there was a tax put on any film that came into New York City. And since shows were like maybe kinescoped on the West Coast or filmed on the West Coast like Bonanza and so on and so forth, and they, had to, they wanted to show them on stations in New York, mm -hmm. if they brought the film into New York, they had to pay tax on the film. But if they fed the film from New Jersey, mm -hmm. You avoided, they didn't get taxed. You avoided right. the tax. So therefore, all the film shows were shown from New Jersey. Yeah. So NBC had studios in New Jersey. That's smart. Yeah. And that's where Tucker worked out of when I was doing his uh, his show. He was in New Jersey. This other guy was down in Florida somewhere. The right wing guy and me. I was in a little, you know, studio smaller than this room, with a camera looking at me. You know. And that's it. Yeah. And of course, I had the, you know, the earphones on so I could hear everybody else. Yeah. So. Who was the, that guy with the right wing guy hated you, I think. Remember? I remember no, he, always, didn't, he didn't hate me at all. He, he always came across like he didn't like your points. He, he, didn't, he didn't agree with my points. Yeah, that's me. what it was. Yeah. Well, it was like, but we used to talk to each other sometimes not uh -huh. on the air, and we got along great. Well, it was entertaining, actually, the, the polar opposites going against each other, I thought. Maybe, yeah. maybe Tucker Carlson will run for president. Oh, God. I doubt Well, I was that. talking to Phil, Alex, and you know what Phil said? I, he I says, don't even I... want to know what Phil no. said about it. <laughs> no, we don't want it's to. Actually, you might I like it, though. No, I, no. No, I don't want to no. know what Phil has to say about this unless he calls the show and, I guess, okay. it, well, it inflicts his opinion upon us. Right? Okay. You know. Plus, no. I don't know that you're going to repeat exactly what he said anyway. Well, it's nothing bad. You know what he did say? You want me to say it or No. no. 
Well, we just said he doesn't think Trump should run. We young. said he no. Said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, the trouble is, is he's been saying that all along, Tony. And if Trump gets the nod, he will vote. I don't think he's going to vote. I don't think he's that thrilled with him now, I think, really. That's because he wants DeSantis, Tony. Yeah, he wants DeSantis bad. You're right, Alan, about that, yeah. yeah he's not going to get DeSantis. DeSa- nope. uh, DeSantis <laughs> is getting to it. What, uh, would you agree with me on this one, um, uh, Kevin? That that DeSantis is really kind of spoiled at this point. He, he just isn't coming across well to the national public. No, he's not. He's not gaining any ground. That's for sure. No, he's not. Not at all. Not at all. He's losing. Now, granted, there'll be a difference once he says, "Yeah, I'm a candidate," and then people will start listening to him or whatever. But you know, he is. What happens is they they sit in a place like Florida because they're the governor, and every time they say something, it's on TV down there. They get this impression that they're more important to everybody than they truly are. And they have this inflated feeling of who they are. Uh, This has also happened, by the way, in other countries. Like, remember Idi Amin, and he had that little, he was a tin horn dictator in Uganda, and he thought the whole world was listening to him. You know, that he was as important as the President of the United States, all right, when he, of course, wasn't. Same thing's true of DeSantis. He sits down there, and because the Florida television covers him and everything he says gets out there, he thinks he's bigger than he really is. But nationally, most, a lot of people don't even know who he is, you know? And if they hear who he is, they probably won't care. And now that Mickey Mouse is suing him, yeah. Although some people said he can he can take that as a badge of courage, you know what? Mickey Mouse is suing you. That's not a good thing to be sued by the mouse. I mean, you're being, like, you're being sued for ruining somebody's business. You know, and they can even maybe prove it, because the amount of people that went to Disney World in uh, uh, 2021 is less than it was. Excuse me, 2020 was more than it was in 2022. And the 21 was not as much. It, the, the, the amount of people going to Disney World has gone down. COVID? By about 15 million people. COVID. Well, no, because this was 2022 it went down. Oh, oh, 2021 okay. it was up. It was up around, oh. yeah. Uh, and they could say, you've ruined business for us. Yeah, you yeah. need help. Yeah. You know. Yep. They could sue him civilly. He's damaged. Their yeah, how much money did he pay? Now they're suing him, but I don't know what they're suing the state of Florida for or how much. Because shouldn't they, isn't there supposed to be a financial amount? Or can you just yes. sue to, for the sake of suing? No, they get, no it, I haven't heard. Best, most lawsuits win based on damage. Yeah. Are you damaging their name? Are you damaging their credibility? Well, can't, can't you sue him? To turn to not be able to do what he's doing, in other words, to he has this commission he appointed to decide what to do with Disney World, you know, to rule over Disney World, and they just don't want to accept that. They, they can get a restraining order. That's, maybe. maybe that's what they want. Well, they but they didn't ask for a restraining order. They're actually suing him. I know. Yeah, I mean that demonstrates malicious intent. Well, it's certain, the, the, what shows the malicious intent is when he made that stupid statement about I'm going to open up the uh, Florida State Prison next door yeah. to Disney World. Do you think that would hurt business? Because <laughs> let's face it, Disney World, you know how, many, how big that land is that Disney owns there? I mean, yeah. they own, I can't remember how many thousands yeah. and thousands of acres. It's a city. <clears throat> It, no, but yeah. it's more than just a city. It is, it's a giant chunk. Uh, he mm-hmm. went in there and he, Disney bought just a lot of land. And so let's say they want to build a prison on the perimeter of, uh, of Disney World. There's enough buffer zone there that I don't yeah. think they can even get close to that, you know. But to threaten it is to create a reason why people go, oh, I don't want to go down to Disney World. They're near a prison. You know, so anyway, I think I think he can show negative intent. Disney World is twenty five thousand acres, twenty five thousand, which, which wow. is about forty three square miles. 
Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's bigger than a lot of cities, that's for yeah. sure. Oh, it's bigger than Manhattan. About the size of San Francisco. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, San Francisco's 49 so yeah. that, that square miles. So. Do you think the number of children are not getting uh, as many kids as they used to get? Children are not getting as many kids as what do you mean by that? At at Disney. Wait, wait. Oh, you think not as many kids are visiting Disney now? No, that's mm -hmm. where you take your kid. Yeah, that yeah. was my whole deal was to take my kids there. Yeah. You know. I uh, probably wouldn't have gone by myself. Then you take your kids and then you can somehow you can offload the kids to some of the stuff that's going on. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's a it's a big operation, just a horrendously huge operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how many people they employ. They employ, I think, I heard thirty thousand, something like that. Yeah, I mean, they're the largest single employer in the state. Yep, doing layoffs right now, but it's all in the top yep. end. Yeah, yeah. Well, the layoffs are in the whole Disney Corporation. Yeah, they're yeah. in the, the administration in, in part. In fact, Not I that. haven't, in what I've looked at, Disney Plus has been hit. ESPN, which they yep. own, has been hit. Uh, but um, uh, I don't see that uh, the Disney World's been hit at all. I didn't see No, it. they're keeping the hourlies and stuff around because they need them. Yeah, yeah. According to in 2022, they have 77,000. 77,000? 77,000. Yeah, I knew it had to be huge. Yep. In Disney World, a, yep. In 2022. Right here. That's a double our city. Yeah. Yeah. 77,000 people. Yep. Can you yep. imagine if Disney pulled out, how that would impact the economy of that yep. state? It would yep. collapse. You know, and and if they don't sell the land, they hold on to the land. You know, I mean, it's 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 a gigantic piece of land that anytime they want to unload it, they can. But well, they had to clear that. That was all swamp land when before they built. Well, it. you know how you know how Disney got the land. He had to buy off the land from other people. Yeah, but he made up a corporation that was buying it. So nobody would know it was Disney. Because oh, if wow. they walked in and said, Walt Disney wants <laughs> to buy your land, huh. you weren't going to get it for the cheapest price. They were going to raise it and say, hey, Disney's got deep pockets. Uh, you know. But these people didn't know that it was Disney, so they just sold it for you know, a rather equitable price. But they bought up all that land. Um, and it, I don't know how many parcels of land it took to do that. And most of it was swamp. Yeah, it was all swamp. I read the biography. And his brother was the uh, guy. Well, he handled the money. I forgot the brother's name. The older brother. Roy. They had a Roy. real I was, they, were, they hired a real estate to go in there and buy it. And then after it was theirs, they turned it over to Disney is what you're saying. Yeah. No, it's not what they did. They just went oh. in and said they were somebody else. They, they the car, It was a... A corporation that was asking that saying they wanted to buy it and they were buying it uh and they didn't want just didn't want to say disney because they knew people would jack the price up and that's reasonable yeah. that's a reasonable reason yeah. you know? yeah. hmm? sure what were you going to say charlie no i'm just going to agree with you that they uh and they they just they knew that if if they did Say I'm Disney and I want to buy your land. Price would automatically jack up. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you, you, you know, I mean, but uh, I I just think that uh, I think I I Iger Bob Iger knows the strength he has in this thing, he, and the previous Disney guy was doing it all wrong, you know, from the very beginning. Um, not that Iger wouldn't have done the same thing and said, "Hey, we're gonna, we're not gonna bow to this law that he's got these anti-gay laws because a lot of our employees are gay." Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, but he might have handled it in a different way that didn't piss off DeSantis. I didn't realize they opened so far back, 1971, October 1st. 1971, huh? I went to Disney, I think, in '77. I think I have to ask my brother. I've and it's never been the same, Tony. 
Well, mm-hmm. I, I went, uh, when, when, when was the last time? The last time I went yeah. was when my uh, ex-girlfriend and I, uh, when I went to work in Florida and she came down with me and we went through, I decided we'd go th- through Disney World and we stopped at Disney World for a day and we did everything we had to do. And I remember Penn Jillette saying to me, well, you know, you better get there early. Because if you get there any later than like noon, you won't be able to get on any rides. Yeah. Well, the thing he didn't count on was I was going there on January 15th. Oh, yeah. That ride's in school. If you want to get on every ride in Disney World, go January 15th. Okay? <laughs> because there's nobody there. I mean, I went into every every ride, just walk right in, boom. And finally, I, I called Penn after it was all over. No, I, I saw Penn in Florida because he came down to do my show, and I said, we got onto everything. It was empty. He says, really? You know what's a good ride, the Peter Pan ride? I guess you went on there, right? That was a good one, went the boat. That's the, the wimpiest ride oh, they've I got. I was a little scared because it was in the dark. Mom was like, don't worry. But, you know, you, you see, like, him fighting with Captain Hook. Oh, but I was geez, like, oh, my. That's the wimpiest ride of them all. That was one that was uh, so wimpy. It was that, in the boat. That, I, that I think that it was the, uh, like, you used to have A tickets, B tickets, it's C tickets, It's the Lost D World tickets. or something. It, it, oh, I like that. That was an original block. It was I mean, the lowest ticket. You could just, I, yeah. No. Tony, Tony, Tony. And just rode the thing all day long. I, I, only because it was dark, my brothers, that you got a little scared at first. But I was like seven at the time. Then you open your eyes, it's like, oh, it's not because you think something's going to pop out at you. I think. Well, my favorite thing was that I did, I, I was going to go to uh, to Disney World. And uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Chuck Farnham, who you heard earlier tonight. And I were both supposed to go. And then Chuck decided at the last minute he didn't want to go. Really? And I went, oh, well, you moron, I'm stuck now right with there. a ticket, a plane yeah. ticket to, and, and to go to Disney World. And he went, well, I'm not going to go. Okay, so he didn't go. So I had to do something. So I just said, is there any woman out there in the audience who'd like to go to Disney World with me? And some woman called me up and said, yeah, I'll go with you. And so I took her, okay? And uh, I'm glad I took her because we went on that, you know, the 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 big tram ride that goes into oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's a small world you know it starts and it goes down into the it's a small world pavilion and uh, that is where i got myself serviced shall we say <laughs> I, would, I, I would say blow job but i don't want to be demonetized <laughs> but i will be anyway so blow job blow job blow job blow job i'm glad somebody enjoyed that stupid ride yeah well it's the only <laughs> way the only way you're going to enjoy it's a small world after all you know my kids wanted to go on it, so i had to go with them I went on that. Yeah, was, crazy. Run my kid. Yeah. and you probably saw <laughs> tony at the same time my mother, would have had, my mother if he was on that ride with my mother would have closed my eyes what's going on there ma <laughs> I, I've heard this story. From, I've man. heard this story from other people as well. But I have a friend, Billy J, who yeah. was a comedian, who who went down. It's a small world after all. Went on, you know, he's down there. Went into it's a small world after all, and he said in the middle of the ride, mm. the boat got stuck. It the it, the whole thing just all the all the boats stopped. And the trouble with it is, is that if you're going through there. It, they sing da 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 eight hundred times. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Country, but so and then as you turn a corner, you're now hearing the next part of that track. And sometimes it's like some Africans, and they go, boom, 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 boom. You know, uh, very racist actually. <laughs> and, and and then you turn around, and, but if you're stuck, you just keep hearing the same section of that song over and over he said that by they were there in there for three hours oh my god i would have walked off he, yeah. he said he, uh, he we, i, I would have gotten out and walked. got the border was little it wasn't even deep can you just it wasn't off? even deep i would have walked you know but of course i'm sure they had some announcers going by the uh, way you're not you were you were right alex well, walt disney productions used various dummy corporations to acquire the 27,443 acres. See? 
land in May 1965. Hey, I'm the host of this show. I'm always right. Okay. <laughs> I never said Haven't you were Haven't you wrong. learned that? Uh-huh. Haven't you watched enough Tucker Carlson to know that fact? <laughs> that, you know, crazy. <laughs> I'm the host, therefore it's got to be true. Absolutely. You know? But uh, anyway, so I mean, it was uh, it was um, um, quite a uh, you know I, I love that uh, I like I like Disney World. I've tried to t- get Marjorie to go down there. She refuses to go down. Why? She ever go? Oh wait a minute, no, that wasn't to Disney World. If she ref- <laughs> <laughs> no, she refuses to go down to, <laughs> to Disney. World. I don't know. She just doesn't want to go. And you I gotta said, go once, though. My brother-in-law didn't said, go. We took him. He liked I'll it. I'll pay for it. We'll go. We'll put ourselves in the best hotel possible. Although I yes, want to, I want to um, go to the Star Wars hotel so I can be in like, oh, the, yeah. you know, boy, they got, boy, they got a good deal. A hundred dollars an acre. Wow, that's cheap. Yeah, but I mean, they weren't cheating anybody. You no, know, but I like that he just, did the dummy It's just if they had said we're Disney, they would have gone, oh no, hundreds too yeah. cheap. You know. Yeah. But if you say you're like the uh, the Bluto Corporation, you know. Well, you, well, you Trump Corporation, you get it a penny on a dollar. <laughs> Look. Yeah, if you're lucky. Why is my hotel sinking? Yeah, well, we'll, you know? it, it, tr- Trump wants to buy it. Uh, listen, we'll we'll let him buy it as long as he promises never to move down here. <laughs> yeah. The alligators come with it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, they, I mean, they, what they did is they took that thing of swampland and they turned it into really developed property. Yeah. yeah. The book was good on that. But it's still kind of wild. Remember the kid who was eaten by an alligator down yeah. there? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alex, there's got to be a lot of alligators down there then still. Yeah. Well, it's their home. Yeah. I know. Where are they going to go? They can't, they can't gentrify it's, the area. you got to leave. <laughs> it's their home. You can get rid of all the swamps you want to. Yeah, you're be right. A couple, there are a couple of, of, go of away. alligators are going to sit there and go... Yeah, there exactly. you go. Where do you want us to go? You're coming here. I always, you know, I'm always bothered by people who always go about, you know, oh, that kid was eaten by an alligator. Well, listen, you know, the alligator was there before the kid was. Exactly. Okay. You got to watch the kid now. My and, mother never and, 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 and he has a certain right to exist, you know. Uh, I, I, when I hear about sharks uh, eating people, I go, hey, ain't the shark's fault. He's hungry. You know, My mom I, used to take me to Rockaway. We never, you're not going in only up to your ankle. She used to hold me. You can't go in because she can't swim. You're going to drown. You know. So then that. the kid gets out of the water. He's got no <laughs> ankles. <laughs> you know? He's got to learn sometime. <laughs> but, I was in Florida this year. Yeah. They had sharks and sharks after sharks. Really? After, I'm talking about thousands of sharks. Would go were, by. were they dangerous ones? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, not all sharks are dangerous. You know, oh, yeah. most uh, most it's sharks are, won't won't chomp on people. You know, um, don't go don't go in the pool, in the in the water with them. Yeah, I often heard that if you ever get attacked by a shark, uh, hit him in the nose. Oh really? Yeah, I can't remember what comedian said. What with the other arm you still have? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> What you do is you take your wife's arm and put it out there, and it yeah. grabs your wife's arm. But supposedly, sharks do not like to be punched in the nose. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've always heard that. Yeah. Well, a lot of sharks in Florida, they're all Republicans, right? Hmm. Yeah. King of Our good though. friend Phil goes out and swims with the sharks. Yes, yep. he does. But they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't hurt him at all because he's one of their own. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> Picture behind me, he took. <laughs> Yeah. And there's a guy in the water with a hammerhead and a yeah. Yeah. tiger shark. Tiger shark. Yeah. But the, yeah, I wouldn't even get in a cage. No know. way, exactly. Yeah, you couldn't get me down there. They go outside the cage and they feed these sharks by hand. Well, I think as long as sharks have been fed, you're not in any yeah. trouble. You know. Uh, know. Unless yeah. you get a shark with an attitude, I guess. But what do shark like? The sharks like to eat most of all. They like to eat fish, don't they? Fish, yeah. yeah. Sure. You know, healthy diet. I, 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 you know, they attack a human being. If they attack a human being, it's probably by accident. I think they yeah. like bagels and uh, cream cheese. They the bagels, <laughs> cream cheese, and locks, of course. Because well, I know I do. Because <laughs> it's fish. Uh, yes. And it's a Jewish shark, however. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, right. really. You know. If you're kosher, just eat it. Just don't eat me. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't eat me. I'm not kosher. Yeah. Are humans kosher? I don't know. Are we? Unless we're blessed, right? Huh? <laughs> then, then, then you're, then you're fair oh, game. blessed, we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So anyway, Kevin, how was your weekend? Hmm. Pretty quiet. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because next week it'll be busy. Because I talked with Kevin and a few other people, uh, and I was I was kind of puny out early. Cause it's it's late for me, you know. So I uh, but I, I I so I got out of the call last Saturday, and I come back and they're still talking like an hour later. You guys kept going. We're talking about sports, I think. Sports. Oh, then I got out in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, they, on this show I'm doing tomorrow night, there is a segment they do towards the end of the show where. One of the people there does a kind of sports report. Mm -hmm. And I went, that's good, because I can now keep my Emmys. <laughs> what time is that thing you're doing tomorrow? It's uh, it's uh, it, 6 o'clock our time here in New York. Yeah. Well, it's 3 o'clock your time. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's, on, uh, it's called The Answer is the name of the station. 970 The Answer. Oh, I was there, I think, yeah, 970 AM. 970 a.m. the answer is dot com. Uh, you just go online and just look it up. Just put in the answer radio and it'll it'll give it to you. And then you can just a little thing there. You can listen to it online. You know, it's like, you know, you hear me enough already. Do you have to hear me again tomorrow night? You know, <laughs> but if I ask for calls, you could call, you know. So I are listening to kitchens in the different channels. So what? Um I listen to the radio on the on the Amazon. I kind of I like the uh, the Amazon device. You can just call the channel you want and just pulls it on up. Uh, is the answer on there? I think it is because I say ten ten wins. I think it's definitely on there because I do ten ten wins at night and I listen to the news. Yeah, but it's it's a it's a Christian right wing radio station, and oh, I'm okay. thinking, what am I doing oh, there? Yeah, how did, what this a, should be. What, what about this, what about about this picture? Just does not look right. <laughs> that ought to make it good. Yeah, you know. Who's on I mean, it's funny. I'm not. I'm like. I don't think I'm getting paid for it. I'm just doing it as kind of a nice thing I'm doing for somebody, uh, and uh, um, I'm. It's fine with me. I'd be fun, you know, sit in a radio station again and and do a show. Uh, but I wonder if they can still fire me like they did with uh, Tucker Carlson, even though I'm not getting paid, you know. <laughs> Everybody's sitting around all day long on MSNBC. Why do you think Tucker Carlson got fired? Who gives a crap? No, give me sure. the reasons why he wasn't fired. Yeah. You know, I think it's an easier question to answer. What do you think of the reasons he didn't get fired? Because, I mean, come on. You know, I mean, bottom line is there has to be a financial reason yeah. why he lost his job yeah. because if he was making that place buckets of money hand over fist which he wasn't because there were advertisers that would not advertise with tucker they're saying well you know this guy gives it gets us into a lot of trouble he gets us really high ratings but we can't turn those high ratings into advertisers nice. and so therefore what good is he doing us I mean, we could have somebody in there just filling the the time up and we get more advertisers who want to advertise there just because we're Fox than with Tucker Carlson. Because they're not getting rid of Hannity. And by the way, you know Hannity made three times what Tucker Carlson was making? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. In fact, wait a minute, let me just quickly, I have it here. I, I, I was going to do it tonight, okay, about how rich are talk show hosts, okay? So uh, we can start off with... Um, Let's see here. Uh, uh, ten, uh, okay, here we go. Uh, who is Kylie? Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, well, we'll move down here. Uh, Nicole Wallace is worth $3 million. They don't say what she makes a year. Katie Turr is worth $4 million. 
Joy yeah. Reid, these are all people on MSNBC, makes, uh, has $4 million to her name. Ari Melber, um, Ari Melber has $4 million. Uh, it doesn't say how much they make a year, these people, though. Mm -hmm. Chris Hayes, $6 million. But Let's get down to the Fox News. Here we go. Who's, uh, who's at Fox News? Oh, San, uh, Sandra Smith. Who's Sandra America Smith? America Report, $6 million. Uh, Harris Faulkner. Um, she has $6 million. Okay. But when we go all the way down here, let me get down to... No, oh, here, here is one that'll get you. Janine Pirro is worth fourteen million dollars. Oh, Holy moly! Fourteen million. That's their worth, not their salary, right? This is their That's total right. worth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell, sixteen million. Greg Gutfield. Yeah. Who, by the way, used to listen to my show in San Francisco. Yeah, he's from San Mateo. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he told uh, Bill Maher on Bill Maher's uh, podcast mm -hmm. that he he used to listen to me. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen million dollars. Wow. Brett Bear, twenty million dollars. Nick Cavuto, his annual salary is seven million dollars a year. His net worth is twenty-five million. Oh. Tucker Carlson was oh. worth thirty million. Mm. He made eight million dollars a year. Wow. Rachel Maddow, thirty-five million dollars net worth, seven million dollars per year. Okay, Laura Ingram uh, make uh, is worth forty million dollars, and she makes fifteen million dollars a year. Wow! Hey, what am I sitting here doing this yeah. for? Yeah, yeah, really. You could be on uh, go Fox News is looking for somebody and, to fill in. Anderson Cooper. They say his net worth is fifty million, but I can't believe it's that low because he had all that. Yeah, uh, money. He all had all that Gloria Vanderbilt money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he makes he makes twelve million dollars a year, and Sean Hannity oh. is worth. Hold on to your seats, guys. Oh, All right, two hundred and fifty million dollars, <laughs> but he's been there a long time. Yeah, uh, and he also has a radio show. That's he reportedly makes forty forty five million dollars per year, including. The twenty-five million from Fox. Wow! So he was making at least three times. Right up there with cut. Alex Jones and Infowars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's the. Uh, I, I kind of like the. I thought you'd be interested in that. Yeah. You know, those people make a lot of money, a lot of mm -hmm. money for doing a lot of nothing. You know. But I, I think it all boiled down to money over at Fox. They wouldn't have gotten rid of him if he was making them money hand over fist. Mm. Instead, he wasn't making. He was probably not. He was. I'm sure he was making his salary, but you know he wasn't bringing in the big bucks. Hannity was bringing in the big bucks. That's why Hannity's still there. Um, and then they do got rid of. That, do you hmm? think it's going to hurt the bottom line for the Republican Party because Tucker Carlson's gone? Yes. I do too. Yes, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean that's easy to say, you know, yeah. but it's true. It's I, true. I agree. I, it's I absolutely think so true. Too. I, it, it's sad. It's kind of uh, you know, who knows? Anyway, hold on a second. I got to put on a theme here. I'm still trying to figure out why you can't hear the theme. Yeah, we used to be able to. You, you know, when you were able to, I think is when we were using. Um, is when we were using um, uh, what Skype. You, uh, Skype. Skype. Yeah. There you could hear it. Probably now you can't. I'm trying to figure out. Well, we can't out. hear Jack on Skype. He plays music. We can't hear it. Oh, oh wait really? a minute. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, hey, that's uh, that's it for us here. Um, uh, a good little show tonight. I appreciate it. I'll probably be on tomorrow night, but if I'm not going to be, I'll put it up on Facebook. If, I, if I'm just too exhausted from having done an hour of radio somewhere. God, well, I, if it rains, I'll be on. What? If it rains, I'll be on. I'm supposed to umpire tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, hey, listen, thank you very much, Jeff. And thank you to Alan. And thank you to Charlie. And thank you to, of course, uh, as always, to uh, our good friend Kevin. And Tony, thank you as well. 
Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. If you uh, stay right where you are, Jack Bishop is next. He'll be here with the intersection, okay? Taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. We'll be back again here tomorrow night, unless I say otherwise on Facebook. Uh, we'll be here again tomorrow night. Uh, uh, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night.